Welcome everyone to the Josh Robinson Show. I am, of course, Josh, and I am here with a very special guest today, the interview queen herself, Miss Alicia At- Alicia Atut. How are you doing today? I am so excited that you're here, but um, thank you again for doing this. Um, how are you today? I'm doing very, very well. I had today kind of off and meaning I wasn't traveling anywhere. <laughs> so um, I did a lot of editing, filmed a lot of interviews and... Uh, yeah, it was a, it's been a good day, and now I'm capping it off with this podcast, so not, not a bad way to, <laughs> to finish everything. It's always, um, it, I could imagine that you've, you just are constantly probably traveling, whether it's by plane, by car, where, however you decide to get around, but I could imagine that would be, I, I, I want to say exhausting in a good way. Yeah, that's definitely the way to put it. It's exhausting in a good way because <laughs> as as you're exhausted, you're like, oh gosh, I just want to sleep. But at the same time, you're like, oh, I'm having so much fun doing this. I guess <laughs> I shouldn't really complain at all. So yeah, exhausting in a good way is a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> good, A good problem to have, I guess. <laughs> I guess would be right. a way. Um, but you are just an incredibly, incredibly busy woman as of late. Um, congratulations, by the way, on your signing with MLW. I'm super happy. I'm glad to see you. You kind of stuck to one spot because you're kind of listen the last couple of years and just I mean just in wrestling in general it's been a crazy year but just the last year or so for you has been wild just watching it as a fan and just watching it from afar it's like Alicia's doing some doing some stuff right now it's really cool to see thank you yeah it felt so good to have a place now I can officially rep all the time and talk about and call home because you're right before I was at a few different promotions. I mean, as far as like more majors go, and then I do tons of indie stuff and conventions. And it was awesome because it was all freelance. It was all for my DIY site still. And then whether it was doing the AEW stuff or Impact or whatever it may have been, it was just on a like show by show basis, which I'm super grateful for. It was like really cool working with both companies. And then when MLW approached me and they were like, hey, we want to kind of test the waters, have you out for a show and we'll see what happens. And then we all liked what happened, <laughs> and then they said, "Then they said, you know, we'd really like to look at this being more permanent." I was like, "Okay," um, and I'm really glad that it all worked out because I I couldn't be happier. It's so cool to see you kind of just like plant your feet and just be like, "I'm here. This is home," and I can tell just by watching that you're just genuinely happy and you're genuinely enjoying this because there's nothing worse than not just with wrestling with whatever is when someone is just there to be there and they're not enjoying themselves because you see it all through the, the entertainment industry or just in life in general. But you, you can clearly see that you're just happy to call MLW home. It just feels good. It's one of those things I never knew if it would happen. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because when it comes to shows, especially in wrestling, you know, you have a decent production team, you have a ton of wrestlers, and then there's usually only one of me, and then you have, like, commentators. So, you know, every company, let's say there's, like, five majors, aside from, you know, pretty much WWE, who's the only brand that have, like, more than two, let's say, yeah. um, if you look at all the other big companies, there's only one real spot to be filled. So the fact that yeah. this brand kind of took that leap of faith in me and they wanted me to be a face of their company and they, they saw value in me means so, so much. So that's why when I'm there, I'm happy because when I'm, I'm treated wonderfully there, I love the locker room. I love what I'm doing. So there's no reason to not kind of be, be happy <laughs> whenever, I have, whenever I have tapings, which is awesome. And the fact it shows through is great because like half those promos I'm, either scared or offended so the fact you can still tell (laughs) that i'm having fun is awesome it's just um it's it's almost like when you know when something's almost too good to be true and you're like wait a minute what's about to go wrong here because this is all going too well and i can just tell by the way you um the way the most thing i love like the best thing about you with mlw is that it seems like and just by listening to other interviews that you've had Um, It seems like they're allowing you to be you. They're not trying to be like, be this and be that. They're kind of allowing you to do as you please because you still produce a lot of other interviews and content on, on, you know, away from MLW, but just being you because I feel like there's a reason you got signed is because you are Alicia and and you kind of present the best version of yourself like we all do, but you also, like, they're not changing who you are. You're kind of just like... I'm just doing my thing. I'm just going with going with the flow and this brought me to the dance now. So why not keep doing the tango with it now, I guess? 
Right, and that was the thing I really respected about them. They weren't bringing me in to do some, like, dumb gimmick or to not, you know, be exactly who they hired. Yeah. And by no means am I saying, like, other backstage interviewers have dumb gimmicks for me. <laughs> what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is they could, have, they could have done that to me. And they just wanted me, which is awesome because, one, that's super flattering and cool to know. Um, but, two, I mean, for the past, like, six years between doing music for – three or four years and doing the wrestling for two and a half, three, yep. like all I've done is be myself. Um, whether it's in character gimmick interviews, my sit downs or promos, I'm always myself. Yes. And that's, I think the coolest part is that I've been accepted. Um, and I mean, Hey, I won't complain about that. Like that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty awesome and like fun thing to have. I can just walk into work, be me on and off camera. And like people still find it entertaining. There's no, there's no BS. There's no weird, like, yeah, stuff attached to it it's just me and it's cool that i've been able to do that yeah it's and it's cool for just a fan and just someone on the outskirts kind of watching in it's just like this is just really cool to see and not only that is like your journey is so crazy i'm probably you probably heard that so many times from so many different people but it's such a fascinating journey for you because for someone who is uh, we're both 90s kids so um it's like (laughs) for someone who's a similar age to me and just like absolutely killing it, not to blow smoke or anything like that, but you're just absolutely killing it with, with with your own stuff, with your website, with MLW. Um, and for someone to start with music, I mean, who can't relate to music? Like I've always said, not everyone's going to love wrestling, but everybody loves music because you're a crazy person. If you you don't, don't love some form of music, um, in some weird music is just a part of our lives. It's been kind of, it's it's with you since you were born really like you've always had music around you so to start in music um I always ask this question with people with music as a, as a young Alicia as a little as a little child what was what was going into your ears at that point what kind of music were you listening to growing up oh I was all over the place one day I'd be listening to like Duran Duran and Frank Zappa and then the next day I was listening to the Shy Lights and like Otis Redding and then I'd have a day where it's Fleetwood Mac and the Bee Gees and then like yeah and then one day I'd listen to like the used and Taking Back Sunday and Dashboard Confessional so I grew up like my parents have very eclectic tastes in music like my my dad's like a music wizard and my mom just has such a great taste so I just listened to everything and so when I was a kid like most people had no idea who some of these bands were um, especially older bands and I would just walk into like a music history class and like you know I was proud to be a know-it-all because I was like yeah I know my music (laughs) so um yeah, those were those were like some of the the bands, but I'm really just all over the place. Me too. I don't really see genre of music, especially older. Like I'm just like if music, there's good and bad music to me. If it's good, it's good. If yeah, it's bad, those it's are the bad. genres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I listened to a lot of like I was like especially my teenage years. I grew up on Paramore and I grew up on My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy. That yes. was kind of my yes. <laughs> I I was definitely that kid that was like that pop punk. Um, punk music kind of kid especially as I was getting into like my mid-teens like you know that point in your life where everything's just going wrong (laughs) it's just like yes put on some paramore and let me just feel myself like this is how I'm gonna go with my day like that's just (laughs) that's just how I'm going but as a kid like I listened to a lot of like ABBA and Fleetwood Mac and Duran Duran like all of that kind of stuff was it's just (laughs) my mom was very much like boy band centric and my dad was just everywhere with like similar to yours so I just grew up on a lot of different kinds of music, which I guess I'm on an 80s kick right now. I'm on an 80s new wave kick. That's just me at the moment. I'm just listening to a lot of 80s new wave music. I don't, I can't explain to you why, but in two weeks it'll be different and I'll be on like 90s rap or something. You know how it just all short attention span in this life. (laughs) But um, with you and like starting with music, how did that really, how do you go from like just a fan of music to going wait a minute, you know what? I think I want to interview some of these bands and these artists because, I mean, by any stretch of the word, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> no. Um, I was actually at a concert with my sister and my dad. We went to see Bombay Bicycle Club. <laughs> and so I was at this show and my sister drew some artwork of the lead singer. So I actually tweeted them with an account I had like just made. It's not even, it's not even the same Twitter account I have now. <laughs> and um, 
I, w- I tweeted them saying, like, hey, my sister drew this art, sent them a photo, would you be cool to sign it after the show? And their manager wrote me back, and he was like, yeah, of course they will, it's great. So we're backstage, I had this really crappy, dinky little camera uh, that I was just using to take pictures of the band, and then, like, while they played, and then my dad was like, hey, why don't you try asking them two questions? And he just put me on the spot, and I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, just try it. And I was like, oh. So I did my like first two Q video interviews, what I used to call them. I asked them like two ridiculously dumb questions. And um, then it kind of stuck. Then I started going to more shows, um, started asking a bunch of people like two random questions. And then once it started to kind of catch on and people started sharing it and talking about it, I was like, oh, well, I guess uh, – Let's have some more fun with this. Maybe I'll get some better. Maybe I'll get some better gear, and I can do. You know, ask them more than two questions, and you know, um, the ideas kind of started flowing. And then once I started doing those sit downs, and you know, the older I got, then the more I did, the better I got. Yeah. Um, I kind of decided, why don't I give this a shot? I really enjoy it. Let's focus on it. Cause by the time. Like, the timeline was kind of, I started my site when I was 16 or 17. Um, Through those years, I just posted song reviews. And then about the third year in, when I was, like, 19, I started doing interviews. And I think I was, like, either out of school. I was out of school when I was 20. I don't remember. I was out of school, I think, around, like, 18 or 19. And then I started kind of taking it seriously once I was out of high school and really, like, grinding and going to tons of shows and interviewing like crazy and kind of being, like, known in the industry for interviewing. And... Then three years ago, the wrestling stuff came about, um, <laughs> which is a wild, wild, like if music's wild, wrestling <sighs> might be that little bit wilder. I don't even know. It's wrestling like is wrestling is really weird. I mean that in the, the best way possible, but it is a weird right. world. <laughs> it's, it's just bizarre. And the craziest thing is this whole ride has just been so organic. Like it was never anything I expected, never anything I, I necessarily wanted. Like it wasn't a, a dream of mine per se to like be an interviewer or a personality or do what I'm doing but it fell into my lap and because I've been a wrestling fan and a music fan like out of the womb I just was like oh this is kind of perfect like I'm glad it fell into my lap because I enjoy it and I have always had a passion for it and now it just like really randomly worked out yeah it's weird how things like that happen it's just like I don't want to say this doesn't mean like you're not working hard because obviously you've done a lot of hard work, but sometimes things just fall into your lap and you're like, wait a minute, should I run with this opportunity or should I not? Because it, it's a weird point, especially being younger. And it's like, I don't know what I want with life. Like I'm just a kid like right. running around and you, you can't even decide what you need for breakfast, let alone, you know, what you want to do with your life. I mean, <laughs> there's been many opportunities in mine. I'm just like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm a very indecisive person. So I'm just like, uh Oh, <laughs> but it's so cool that you've just kind of taken the ball and run with it. I know that's a very cliche thing to say, but um, from music to wrestling, like with wrestling and interviews with wrestling coming off of the music stuff, again, it's a very weird world. How did you find yourself in the wrestling world? Like at, always a fan, always someone that was just like, this is pretty damn cool. Um, we, we grew up in a very weird time with wrestling. So <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting. I think mainly, like, my site got to a point where it was big on the music side of things. Like, it was starting to really be known, and, you know, I was really developing a fan base. And so it it occurred, like, hey, why don't I try interviewing wrestlers and let's see what happens? Because I am a wrestling fan. It's a whole new audience. It's like a group I've never tapped into before, so let's try it. And then next thing you know, um, I did my first one. It went super well, and then I just never (laughs) stopped. Um, I kept doing... I kept doing more and more of them and you know you mentioned kind of like putting yourself out there and rolling with it and I definitely have rolled with a lot of random <laughs> stuff because I mean the, the way that I ended up getting into doing backstage stuff is I was at a local promotion and their talent really liked my sit down interviews for YouTube and they were like hey we need somebody to do our backstage promos like you're here all the time are you interested and if I didn't take that leap of faith in myself and if they didn't want me to do it I would have never started backstage interviews. If I would have just been like, ah, it's not really my thing. I'll just stick to what I'm doing. I wouldn't, one, be signed with MLW now. I wouldn't have done anything with AEW or had TV or, like, none of that would have happened because I would have just still just been doing my YouTube channel, you know? So it's, like, one of those things where you got to take that ball and roll with it because otherwise (laughs) you don't don't know what's going to happen because taking that backstage stuff, 
led to me ring announcing for shows. Then it led to me literally opening shows, hosting panels for like wrestling legend. It led to so many things. So now anytime something new comes, I'm like, even if I suck at it for the first time, I'm just going to like do it until Roll I get good at it. Roll with the punches. Hell yeah. Right. <laughs> you never want to lose an opportunity, especially in like the entertainment industry. Yeah. Cause that's a dog eat dog world. The entertainment industry. It, I'm, I mean, you've seen so many countless different personalities just kind of dabble in it and then be like, uh-uh, like it's, this is too hard. Cause the easy answer when someone comes up to you and at a backstage show that you were mentioning and just said, Hey, are you interested in doing backstage interviewing? You could have easily just been like, no, I'm kind of doing my own thing. It's exactly. doing well. Um, it's not like you necessarily quote unquote, like needed it. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, I'm doing fine. I can keep continuing just to do what I do. And I'll keep doing it. But just to say yes, because what's the really, what's the worst that can happen? Honestly, it's just like, you don't like it. And you're like, this isn't for me. At least you tried. I always am kind of that try everything once kind of person. Um, I've just kind of got that spirit about me, I guess. And I can see that with you, which is really cool to see. Um, not only that, um, wrestling, wrestling is in a, wrestling's in a really good time. Let's just be honest. It's just being a fan, I know you're kind of inside of it now, but just stepping back as a fan, how cool is it to be a wrestling fan for whatever kind of wrestling that you you kind of feel or whatever you're kind of watching? It's really a great time to be a wrestling fan. Yeah, it's crazy because even if you don't like three quarters of what like what's out there right now, you still have a quarter left that you do like, and that's probably like eight hours worth of TV per week. <laughs> it's- it's ridiculous and it's one of those things where it's good and bad because it's so oversaturated now and there's mm-hmm. so many hours to watch it's like what when do you squeeze it all in can you watch it all i don't know i haven't tried because i just i i can't like it's too <laughs> it's too much but then at the same time like i said if you're picky about the wrestling you like or you only like certain brands or certain wrestlers there's bound to be something now for you to actually enjoy and be hooked into because you know, every every spot has their highs and lows, yeah. but some places have some, like, really great wrestlers, great storylines, and, you know, if you are a fan of wrestling, like, the more the merrier, you get to be choosy, <laughs> Good problem, and if man. you want to watch, <laughs> hey, if you want to watch it all, then just, like, literally 24-7 watch, and if you don't, <laughs> pick and choose, so... It's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that would be the best way to describe it. There's, it's a lot. But it's, a, again, a good problem to have. But it, there is an oversaturation of wrestling, I think. Um, because when do we draw the line with when's too much too much? You know what I mean? Like, it seems like it literally every day there's some form of new wrestling on. Whether you're just watching, like, the mainstream stuff, indie wrestling, whatever it may be, there's, there's so much happening. Like, um, if you're just a... WWE fan or an AEW fan, that's still, (laughs) I mean, that's a lot of hours in a week just as is, not with all the other promotions that are going on as well, because there's just a lot of stuff. But again, it's a good problem to have, and I'm just very excited to be a wrestling fan in the year 2020, by the way. How futuristic does that sound? It sounds like we're in the future, 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But something, I've been going back and like, I've kind of going back and watching a lot of your interviews that I've watched and I've just gone, oh my God, you've done so many. My favorite one, I think it's just because I have an undenying love for this person, is Renee Young. I love that interview with Renee. I just think she's like one of the sweetest people. And it was just, I love the fact that all of your interviews that you do, whether it's music or wrestling, feel very like just two people having a chat and just talking about life. And that's what I kind of got with Renee and stuff like that. Um, But You've mentioned on on so many different podcasts that your kind of your bucket list interviews for wrestling would be The Rock and John Cena. Is it just because of this this ima- like could you just imagine the magnitude of just being able to say I just interviewed The Rock or I just interviewed John Cena? What's about those two guys that just go I need to get those interviews? So for me it's less about their like how well known they are and it's more about when I was a kid, especially being a 90s kid, like Attitude Era was awesome. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, like, when it comes to The Rock, like, he was saying stuff that, like, no one should have ever been saying. <laughs> and we should and, definitely not have been listening. <laughs> right. And he just had such a such an attitude about him and such a cool essence. And I always thought that he was just so fun to watch. Um, so I, before he even got into, like, movies, I've been a fan of The Rock. And then when it comes to Cena, like, I would, you can't see me around the house. I have, like, a Cena necklace and, and, like, shirts. And it's, like, I just think he's awesome. So 
the fact that I've been a fan of them since I was so, so young, um, that's the main reason I want to interview them. But at the same time, like, yeah, it would be awesome to throw that into on my resume and be <laughs> like, yeah, I have interviewed The Rock. I have interviewed Cena. And, like, plus the views would be great. So, like, I won't complain. <laughs> no, you never complain about that kind of stuff. Um, I would, I, I think you'll get there. I honestly, I, I can't wait for the day where it's, like, pops up on my YouTube and I'm like, yes, she's got it. She's <laughs> done it. She's there. I'm like, I'll remember this conversation. I'll be like, yes. Um, but fingers I just, crossed. <laughs> I've got it. I've got them both crossed. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All my fingers and toes are crossed. <laughs> um, <laughs> music wise, have you got any on the bucket list for you music wise that you're just like, yep, they're on that level. I need to get them. I really want to still interview Kiss. And I know I sound like a broken record because I talk about Kiss all the time and I just like, I'm obsessed with them. And, but I just, I love them. I got to go to Finland for this festival called Rock Fest over the summer in 2019. And I got to see Kiss. And this festival actually like flew me out to do social media and like influencer stuff for yeah. them. And they, they knew how much of a Kiss fan I was. They, they were able to sneak me into their meet and greet because Ooh. I was like working directly for the owner. So I got to meet Kiss, which like blew my mind. Um, and I was like, oh, I just, I need to interview them. I've, I've been a Kiss fan since I was a baby and I just, I need it to happen. I don't care who it is. I just, I just need it to happen. <laughs> Someone. So, somebody. <laughs> so, um, uh, I don't know. Like they're on their like tenth final tour right now, so we'll see. Oh yes, if it... <laughs> classic kiss. <laughs> classic, but we'll we'll see if it happens. That's one that does seem a little far fetched because I do find that music interviews are so much harder to get than wrestling. But I don't let anything kind of no, be out of question. I I always leave it open. Why is it, do you think that, is it just because music's on such a bigger scale than wrestling? Is that why it's so much harder or is there another reason? There's just this chain of command when it comes to getting music interviews that's very different from wrestling. Wrestling, I can usually hit up a promotion and be like, hey, I'd like to interview so-and-so yep. and they say yes. Or I could just interview or um, hit up a wrestler for an interview and since they're DIY, they're like, yeah, of course, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to music, Usually I have to either tell the band and then the band will forward it to a publicist who forwards yeah. it to a tour manager who forwards it to management. And then it goes from management to the tour manager, to the publicist, to the band. So it's like, it's this whole chain of command that like, I understand why it's in place, yeah. but it's very aggravating at times um, yeah. when you compare it to wrestling, which is just so easy. So, so that, that's kind almost. of, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the biggest difference. Yeah, so um, it's is Kiss your all-time favorite band? No, my all-time favorite band would have to be the Beatles, just because of the catalog, how just how iconic they are. Yeah. And I don't even mean in pop culture; I just mean like to me, I, I love the yeah. Beatles. But up there as my favorites, I'd probably have to put like the Used, Maximal Park, Bombay Bicycle Club. Um, I'm brain farting on like all my favorite bands right now. I hate that. Don't but, you yeah, hate when you get asked and you're like. Oh, Who's my favorite band? What music do I listen to? What's that? Right. Who do I even like? <laughs> um, but like those, those are definitely a few. Like I'm a huge, huge fan of a ton of English bands. Like Ooh. there was this crazy like time where it was just all I listened to was music from across the pond. It was all like indie bands. And uh, I don't know. That just holds like such a close place in my heart. So I love, I love discovering new music. It's like my favorite thing in the world. It's like, what is this band? Oh my God. They have like three different records. I am going to go in there and just dabble in and just be immersed in that world of, of a band or an artist or whatever it may be. Just discovering the catalog is so fun. Um, I remember when I discovered Paramore and I was like, Oh my God, Paramore is my all time favorite band. Um, <laughs> I just love Paramore to bits and, um, I just love, I think it's cause I just grew up with them and stuff like that. There's something special about when you grow up with any band or artist and you're just like, you get me, you know what I mean? You're, you're singing directly yeah, to me. Sure. I get you. <laughs> but being yeah, I completely a understand that, like my yeah. chemical romance, um, today they just announced the North American tour. Seen that. And... I was like, Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Crazy. I was like, like come to Australia, friends. please. <laughs> <laughs> one of my best friends texted me and he's like, we got to go. I'm like, dude, oh my gosh. Because I've interviewed Frank Iero separately. I've oh. interviewed Gerard Way, but I've never interviewed my cam because they were broken up by the time yeah. I had my site. So uh, I need to, and I need to see them and I need to like cry and I need to hear that G <laughs> chord so I can sing Welcome to the Black Parade. Uh, you hear that? You dress just, all something comes for the night. over you. <laughs> 
just ready. Um, it's so, it's just so wild. I'm just so excited for everything for you. Um, a couple of, a couple of things, just cause we are nineties kid. Were you a Nicktoon fan? Nicktoons were your thing or no? What is this? Nicktoons? Like Nickelodeon cartoons? Oh, is that what, oh my gosh. I was like, I've never heard it referred to as Nicktoons. Is that an Australian thing? It might be an Australian thing. <laughs> I thought you were talking about something totally, I was like, what is a Nicktoon? And I'm like, is that like a delicacy over there? <laughs> yeah, we put it um, next to the kangaroos. It's fun. <laughs> um, yeah, Nickelodeon. I watched a bunch of Nickelodeon cartoons growing up. Like, and then there was Nickelodeon. There was Treehouse. There was um, YTV, I think, too. Um, I don't know if you guys had that there, but... Yeah, I grew up watching a lot of those shows. I'm trying to, I'm Googling it now. Because I'm trying to <laughs> I love that. I love that you, I love that you're just like, yeah, I'm Googling this because I do that all yeah. the time. If someone asks me and I'm like, yeah, I totally have them on my brain. Don't worry. Um, I was like a big Rugrats guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Rugrats, Rocco's Modern Life. I was all about those shows when I was growing up. And... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I love SpongeBob. Fairly Odd Parents was yes. amazing. Jimmy so Neutron. Good. I was a big Jimmy Neutron kid too. Um, Hair. Phenomenal. Um, <laughs> iconic almost. <laughs> classified School so Survivor got. Oh. I can't even talk. Survivor got. I got you. <laughs> um, All oh, of this. Well, okay. I'm going to close my tab and go back to listening because, like, that's going to just distract me completely. How much? <laughs> what? What nostalgia. I loved all those shows, uh, shows, Disney and Nickelodeon, like all of those. Lizzie McGuire and all that was my crack growing yes. up. I was just what a what a lovely teenage girl she was. I was like, Lizzie, I love you. Um, pretty sure I was going to marry Hillary Duff when, I'm, when I was younger. Pretty sure. No, it hasn't happened. Hillary, <laughs> I'm still here, Hillary. <laughs> I, I love Lizzie McGuire so much, but I always felt so bad for Gordo until oh. they took that to like Europe and yes, they started the having movie. chemistry. Oh. So good. Oh, man. Lizzie McGuire movie. <laughs> Next time we chat, we will uh, talk Lizzie McGuire exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's part two everybody just get ready for that um but so many things coming up for mlw i do want to venture back to those what's some things on the horizon there's a show this weekend if i'm not mistaken you are correct we have a show in philadelphia fightland um it is happening february 1st so we are going to be in philly at the 2300 arena completely iconic um a lot of the wrestlers are actually making their debut in Philadelphia for the first time, including the Von Eric. So that is super, super exciting. Um, it's going to be a banging show. We're taping for MLW Fusion, which is our weekly TV show, which airs every Saturday night um, for free on YouTube. So be sure to check that out too. A uh, little plug. But it's just, <laughs> like it's, such a good, um, it's such a good company. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing to see how much it's grown even since I've come on board. Like we're looking at new TV deals, new locations, new places and cool venues we can venture to. And uh, it's just going to be crazy, crazy busy when it comes to MLW. So if you're already a fan, that is so awesome. And thank you to everyone who's been so welcoming to me being on board now. I'm a part of the team. And if you haven't checked it out, I mean, as we talked about before, there's so much wrestling out there. And I genuinely believe that MLW is one of the best because they put so much work into their product, so much work into their talent. And uh, everyone there is just awesome. Like it's the first locker room I've been in where I just feel like fully accepted and just really, really happy. Um, so yeah, just check it out guys. If there's a lot on the horizons, so whether it's a live show or you stream it, be sure to tune into MLW. Streaming has changed wrestling. Streaming's changed the world, but streaming's changed wrestling. And I think it's all for the better because there's access to things that, you know, someone like me who's across the world would never have access to. And now I can, right. which is crazy to me. Um, but it's it's so cool to hear you say that and to hear the care factor that MLW put into things because anyone can run a wrestling show, but not everyone can care about running a wrestling show. That's how I've always kind of seen it. And to feel like you're accepted and, and everything is just, just so crazy to hear. And I would be reminiscing not talking about... Um, just the, I guess the way wrestling and the media is all changing towards treatment of women. And it's so cool to see. And to be someone who is just killing it is so awesome to see just for someone that's just watching, watching along. It's just like, I love just this female power that's come into the world in the last so many years um, in the entertainment world. But how is it, how is it for you being inside of the wrestling world and even music to a certain degree of just seeing kick-ass women at the top 
It's super cool because I feel like it's such a long time coming and it's almost like it shouldn't even be a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it shouldn't even be a thing that's that's talked about. Um, But it is. And like, uh, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I get I I completely agree. Right. But at the same time, like, it's awesome that it's talked about because it needs to be. Um, So when you look around and it's like you're not the only person in the locker room now that's that is female or there's, you know, woman headlining matches and you know when it comes to like award shows for mu- music like women are winning crap left and right like yeah. it's it's awesome um i've always kind of been like you just i just don't see stuff in 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 gender you know what Me i mean too. so like yeah, i agree so, yeah it's like i'll be in a locker room and i don't give i don't care who's in it because we're all there to do a job and it's like we're all good at it so let's just let's just knock I, out the park i'm glad you and said treat that yeah. awesomely um if you're good at your so, job you're good at your job it shouldn't matter whether you're a man woman or alien you know what i mean right for sure so i think it's great i hope it continues that way and i hope it gets to a point where we don't even have to like mention the fact that there's there's females or mention like oh males are doing really well or mention females are doing really well i hope it just gets to a point where they're all, wrestlers. Everyone's they're doing all personalities right. everyone's doing great and like that's that's what really matters the best are at the top it's just like um, on a mainstream scale, for anyone who is just watching a WWE product or an AEW product, um, it is pretty cool that we're nearly a year removed and WrestleMania, the pinnacle of it all, was headlined by women. But I want to get to that point in five, ten years. It's like, it's not headlined because, you know, it's the first ever women's main event of WrestleMania or something like that. I just want it to be like, if they're killing it and they're the number one story going into that, they deserve to be headlining. That's how I want it, whether you're a man or a woman. It shouldn't really matter if you're the best you're the best so therefore you get treated as such so um i hope that happens across the board with with everything in entertainment um it's just cool to see uh just people be people we're all humans at the end of the day so um it shouldn't really matter with gender so i'm glad you brought that up and everything like that but with you what's one thing that you can just kind of tell everybody what to expect from you in 2020 Honestly, I'm just going to keep hustling, keep working my butt off, and then hopefully, you know, I just continue to grow, keep getting cooler and cooler interviews, going to different cities, traveling. I'm going to the UK for the very first time this year, which is super, super exciting. Um, I just I just want to keep, like, surprising myself with the craft that I'm doing because that's the coolest part. It's like I never thought I'd be able to do any of this stuff, um, whether it was me, like, <clears throat> paying my own way out. Um, I never thought that I'd do that, but the fact that now it's like for my work and people are sending me places to do stuff, it, it blows my mind. That's crazy. So, um, yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's super <laughs> cool. It's real. So I just hope to keep growing. I hope to keep seeing new places. Just keep getting better. That's so awesome to hear. I hope Australia is on that bucket list. I hope Australia is on it. <laughs> I want to go so badly, like not to make it sound so like typical but every time i know like um foley did a tour over there where he brought a bunch of wrestlers a couple people do and it's like they always go to these cool farms and see koalas and stuff and then they like tour around they do very like touristy things and i'm like oh that'd just be so cool just a day at the beach and yeah i don't know i watch (laughs) a lot of i watch a lot of travel shows and it's like that would just be nice i want to go everywhere (laughs) you got the travel bug then (laughs) yeah it's it's like you get to see the world because of your job it's it's really cool it is a dream. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm super respectful of your time, and I'm so glad that you took the opportunity to come on today. I, I, I thank you so much, and you just a joy to chat with. I hope you just keep killing it, keep doing you, and just keep on, keep on getting on that grind because it's uh can get a lot, and it's just it's cool to see you kill it. So um, please take this time to um I guess put yourself over it. <laughs> Where can we find you on Twitter, your website, everything like that, and anything you need to promote? Now's your floor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. I'm really glad we were able to make this happen and do this. So that's awesome. But um, as far as plugging away, if you guys just type in Alicia too, you'll find my website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, my YouTube channel, um, which has tons of interviews, sit downs. Uh, I've been doing this new Skype session with people, which is super fun. I love that, fun. by the way. It's been really fun thank to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really cool segment. It gives me the opportunity to talk with people around the world that I normally can't see locally at shows. Yeah. So it's been really fun. Um, my merch store, if you search my name, like everything's on there. Uh, watch MLW. It's such a great, great product. If you're a wrestling fan, you're going to love it. And otherwise, I guess just keep keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I show up near you. If you see me at a show, please say hello. I have resting bitch face, but I promise <laughs> I'm 
always open to talking. Um, I had a fan tell me that. He's like, oh, you looked like you were kind of like down. I was like, no, that's literally just my face. Like, please mm, come over. Relatable. Relatable. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everyone's like, you're so, so angry. And I'm like, I'm actually quite happy. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, no, that's it really, though. Just if you knew about me before, that's so awesome. If you're just discovering me now, I hope you liked what you heard. I'm just like a chick who really likes music and really likes wrestling and talks to both of those categories. So. <laughs> and and final, final question. This will make or break the interview right now. Apple Music or Spotify? Spotify. Thank you. Greatest guest I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for your time. I thank everyone for listening. Continue to rate this podcast five stars on iTunes. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, all of that kind of stuff, and continue to follow me on Twitter at Josh Robinson double zero. And until next time, please be kind to one another. Oh.